my name is David Halsey and I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the University of Vermont Medical Center. We work at the Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center on Tilly Drive in South Burlington. This video segment is to provide you with the information you need to know about how to care for an arthritic knee or hip. So let's get started. A healthy joint is made up of bone, cartilage, gristle or capsule around the joint, the supporting ligaments, and joint fluid. The end of the bone is covered with a shiny layer of cartilage that you've seen when you open up the chicken leg at the picnic and see the end of the bones. Those bone ends rub on each other and that makes the joint and they move and slide and glide in a healthy way. When you have arthritis, you have a breakdown of the cushion cartilage and the supportive structures which starts off with pain and then when a joint hurts we tend not to move it very much. This can result in tightness of the muscles around the joint giving a sense of fatigue and inability to perform the activities you want to do over time. And then that's sort of a vicious circle. You have the pain, the stiffness, and the muscle weakness. All together that represents itself as the sore or stiff knee or hip joint. And here in Vermont we're pretty hard on our joints, aren't we? We love to recreate outside, whether it's biking or skiing or playing sports with our kids. And all of those activities add to the loads on the joint and can begin a wearing out process. Talk just for a minute about the very important lining tissue of the joint and the supporting cartilage. We call that the synovial capsule, the synovial fluid, and the articular cartilage. And working together, these highly complex tissues provide us the shock absorption we need in order to carry out the activities of daily living and, and recreation. So what's the real cause of osteoarthritis? Well, if we think about the anatomy, each one of the parts of a knee or hip joint have problems that lead to the symptoms of osteoarthritis. There can be a breakdown of the hard cartilage on the end of the bone, which really doesn't have much capacity to repair itself. As the cartilage thins, the bone around it can react, getting the formation of bone spurs, and it helps make the joint uh, lose its motion and be more stiff. And altogether, you kind of lose the spongy shock absorption effect of the cartilage, resulting in pain. So here, these are pictures of a healthy joint. So in this case, a knee. And the articular cartilage is the shiny white layer you see on the end of the thigh bone and shin bone there in the picture. If we look at the other picture, where it says osteoarthritic knee, you can see that the hard cushion cartilage on the end of the bone has worn away. It looks like uh, pockmarks or divots in the road that you'd bump along through in your car. Well, that's what happens when you walk on a knee or a hip joint that doesn't have its good cushion. So what happens when you have symptoms of pain in your knee or hip and you come to your doctor? Well, it starts with taking a good history. The history means asking you the questions about how your joint pain affects your life, what type of symptoms you have, what you've already tried to do about it before coming to the doctor, and it really gives us an understanding of what's going on with your knee problem or hip problem. But just as importantly, we need to get a good history of your overall health, from your heart and lungs to your circulatory system. We need to know all about you and your own personal preferences about how you approach your health, how you handle your activities of daily living, work, and what recreational things you like to do. Once we get a full history, then the physical examination begins, and it really starts from head to toe, but we focus primarily in on the hip and knee, and we're looking for things like swelling, redness, how much motion you do or don't have around that joint, the strength of the muscles around the joint, and then some specific tests that tell us a lot about how the supporting structures of the joint are doing. Almost always, we need to use x-ray as well. And most of the time, they're fairly specialized x-rays in how you stand or how they're positioned. So most of the time, we'll do them right here at the Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center to make sure we get the right views. Rarely, we'll also need some blood tests. We're all accustomed to using blood tests for working up problems in our health. But actually, for osteoarthritis, there really is no blood test that tells us about whether you have it or not or if you do, how severe it is. So we really go back to history, physical, and the x-rays. 
Now on x-ray, we look, and we'll go over these with you when you're in the office, we look for sort of indirect evidence that you have arthritis. Remember that important tissue called the articular cartilage, the shiny white cap on the bones? That separates the bones on x-ray, so you and I will see a space between the ends of the bones for the hip or the knee. If you lose the cartilage, then the space narrows. I'll show you that on an x-ray here. So under healthy knee, you can see the bone above at the top of the picture, that's the thigh bone or femur, and at the bottom of the picture, the tibia or shin bone. And between those two, you can see a space. If we look at the other picture called osteoarthritic knee, you can see a distinct difference, can't you? You'll see that the bone ends are actually touching each other, and in fact, there's the reactive spurs are noted on the inside of the picture as you're looking at it on the left side. And actually, on the outside of the knee, you can see the joint spaces gapped apart. This particular patient is bow-legged. Now let's take a look at the hip. Under normal hip, you'll see a round ball in a round socket, and we can see space between those two. That's the normal hip joint. But if we look at the other picture under osteoarthritic hip, you'll see, well, it's actually what you don't see. There's not much space there at all. And the ball is actually squeezed out to the side a little bit, and there's lots of bone spurs around it. That's a significantly arthritic hip. So now that we know what osteoarthritis is and how we evaluate it in the office, including physical examination and x-ray, and what the x-ray changes look like, let's really get to what's important to you, right? We want to talk about how can you take care of this and treat. So the treatment goals for this disorder known as osteoarthritis really is pain relief, because that's really what it's all about. We don't have a pill or a shot or um, another type of treatment that actually cures the disease called osteoarthritis. We have to treat the symptoms, the pain and stiffness. So the first line treatment, what we do always at the start, is to start with over-the-counter medication. And that can be as simple as Tylenol, aspirin, the ibuprofen family of medicines, or naproxen. Those are the generic names for Motrin and, and Aleve. And we will use those and recommend them to you all the time if it's safe given your other health conditions. Make sure you don't have any trouble with your kidneys or your liver or big blood pressure or heart problems. But we take that all into account when we begin to think about what treatments to use. So the first treatment is always going to be an, a low-dose pain reliever to try to limit the symptoms. Next, we're going to talk to you and counsel you a little bit about avoiding the things that bother it most. Don't have to really be a rocket scientist there, but it, it is one of the most effective treatments is to avoid the actual most trouble activities that you have. You might be able to ride a bicycle and swim or walk, but the heavy duty hiking or running might be too much for your hip or knee joint. When you have a really bad day, let's say you've had a, a, a fun activity with your family, but your knee is really bothering you, and you've noticed that it's swollen, ice. Good old fashioned ice. A big bag of frozen peas works really well, by the way. Right on your knee to apply cold for 20 minutes out of every hour for the first couple of hours for sure after the event, and maybe for as long as one or two days. Cycling on and off with the, the cold, giving your skin a chance to warm up a little bit between icing episodes. If, you're, if your kind of knee or hip pain is really more chronic stiffness and achiness, a lot of patients find that moist heat or even dry heat applied with a towel or a hot pack carefully on your skin is a good way to help with those joint symptoms. And the last thing we'll recommend as the first line treatment will really be a gentle home exercise program, which we'll show you how to do when you're here in the office or we'll use one of our physical therapy colleagues here at the Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center to show you a simple 20 minute twice a day home exercise program for motion recovery of the joint if it's stiff and sore and some simple exercises to maintain strength around the joint because a weak sore joint is even more trouble than a strong sore joint. And there certainly are situations where if we're overweight, we'd certainly want to think about weight loss as a long-term strategy to protect our joints. Now, if the first line treatments don't get enough relief for you, we certainly have other options. And the second line treatment would go to a whole set of other things. They include prescription medication. Through your working safely with your family or primary care doctor, we would pick a medication that agrees with you and doesn't have side effects that we don't want. 
Sometimes that includes a more potent version of the ibuprofen family of drugs. You might have heard them referred to as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's a mouthful. And another set of medications that are in the antidepressant family, some of those have good side effects that also help treat the symptoms of arthritis and the chronic pain. Oftentimes at this point, if the simple first-line treatments haven't worked, we'll go ahead and try a formal physical therapy referral where our physical therapy colleagues can start to use uh, heat or ice or both together, something called contrast therapy. They also have ultrasound and other um, neuro, neuroelectric uh, stimulation called TENS, T-E-N-S, that can be helpful for pain. So when it's been a more chronic problem for you, physical therapy certainly can be appropriate. It's something you would go to their office for maybe once or twice a week for three or four weeks. We'd give that a try as a second tier treatment. Finally, in the second tier of treatments, we will use an injection occasionally, and we use cortisone most of the time because we know it works. It's relatively safe if used carefully and not too frequently, and it's also not very expensive. There are a lot of other injections you may have heard about, um, things like hyaluronic acid or stem cells or plasma-rich protein. Seems like there's a new one coming on the market every six months or so. All of those options are also available to you here through my colleagues at the Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center here at University of Vermont. But given the fact that we're the academic medical center, so we use something called the clinical practice guidelines. Big fancy words for what the evidence tells us to do. And the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons helped develop these in 2014, and members of our faculty actually participated in that process. And through that guideline review process, we've come up with some strong recommendations, things that we know work and things that we're pretty sure don't work for most patients. And so I've already gone over really the first line and second line strong recommendations from that guideline. Things like self-care, joint protection, home exercise, and oral medication, weight loss if, if, you, if it's appropriate. But interestingly, if you really go to the literature and study the evidence, the nutritional supplements like glucosamine and chondroitin really don't show any known benefit. No risk, really. Low cost, but no obvious benefit. But I sure know some patients who've been happy with using those supplements, so it's not like it's the wrong thing to do. It's just hard to recommend something that the science doesn't really support. In that same group of works for some, but many it doesn't work, would be the, the injections of hyaluronic acid and plasma-rich protein. We're learning about how to use those, but right now, the majority of patients probably won't get much sustained benefit from even the uh, more expensive and newer uh, injection agents, but we're gonna keep a good close eye on that. And finally, arthroscopic surgery, which is an outpatient procedure to, quote, clean up the joint, really doesn't show much evidence or effectiveness to use for patients with osteoarthritis. We'd like to use something simple if we had to get to surgery, but for osteoarthritis, just simply cleaning out the knee doesn't really seem to help very much. There are some patients where it does help, and we'll talk about that more in the surgical segment that we have for educational video for you. Interestingly, we also know that weight loss, if you are overweight, can be very helpful to help you live with and manage the symptoms. But some of the other things like wedges in your shoes and braces and washing the knee out in the office with uh, a needle lavage, it's called, hasn't really been shown to be helpful. And so we really don't recommend that very often for our patients. And finally, there are a series of things that the evidence just doesn't tell us what to do. And so our clinical practice guideline says, individualize that care, talk with your patient as the physician or orthopedic doc, and see what's, what to use. That, that can include sometimes some custom made braces it can include uh, a variety of other manual therapies, including acupuncture, which can be helpful for some, but again, not much science to tell us which way to go there. So that completes our segment on your understanding of the problem of osteoarthritis of the knee, how we evaluate it, and the non-surgical treatments for that condition. I hope you found this helpful. If you need more information, you can reach us at the office or use the University of Vermont Medical Center orthopedic website.